someone had a question about feeling and go a little bit deeper into what that means and why that's important because it's uh, in the uh, in the Taiji classics, particularly in the young family secret transmissions or the 40 chapters as they call them, you know, there is, it's very explicit there that it is through conscious feeling and conscious movement that one develops the ability to, to move in a uh, highly uh, effective way and to develop Jin, to be able to develop that internal power. And it, it is through the feeling, through that developing that conscious feeling that they say that you open to the uh, spiritual awakening. So let's uh, take a look at what that, what that means. And um, the, the idea that, that I'm working off of is that for the most part, we are in a state where the, the default mode network of the brain is rattling along 24 seven unless you are actively engaged in something else. So even while you're asleep, it is chewing away. And this is something that has uh, been indicated by the fact that your brain is using pretty much the same amount of energy and resources, no matter what you're doing, even while you're, in, uh, while you're asleep. So this default mode network is creating these, these, these thought patterns and uh, when we're not actively engaging it, that's when we get the chatter. That's when the monkey mind appears and it chatters away. And if we want to experience a, a moment of where that is not present, where we go to the gap between thoughts, we need to be able to shift out of that default mode network. And the easiest way that I have found is, um, is through the sense of, of touch or the sense of feeling. And the, um, it works with any, other, any of the senses, but it, it's easiest to grasp if you go through the sense of touch because it's the one thing that is non-local. It's the one sense. So you see with your eyes, you taste with your tongue, you smell with your nose, so that those are all very localized, whereas you feel all over. And to the extent that you can be aware of those tactile sensations, you, and bring your awareness to it, then you shift into a different part of the brain. You activate a different part of the brain and that pulls you out of that default mode network for the moment. And through practice, you can get there quicker. I don't think you, you ever get there where you're completely, it's completely absent. The, because that's, I think it serves a purpose. The default mode network serves a purpose. It keeps us alive by warning us of bad stuff that might be happening. So they, but if you are really engaged with life, then you're finding more and more of your your attention and awareness is in this awakened state where you're not locked into this think, thinking mode. Because anytime you're in representational thought, anytime you're thinking, you are of necessity not in present time. You're in your thoughts, anytime you're thinking about stuff, you think you are representing what's going on rather than resonating with it. And when that happens, you are uh, you you shift out of present time. Your your thoughts go into what do these words mean? And whenever we can move away from the naming and into that gap between, then we actually are in the present moment. And if we can learn to function in that then we are able to, to know without thinking. We're able to move into a super conscious state. So it is through that feeling that, we, that we're doing. It's something we've been playing with 
for a number of months now, but just to quickly just get you get the idea, just if you if you grab your wrist with with your hand and you feel your wrist with your hand. And the key here is to get out of the story. So that is, I'm, when, I'm, when I do that, I'm not thinking like, oh, I'm grabbing my wrist with my hand. And oh, my fingers go don't go all the way around my wrist and blah, blah, blah. And if I start telling myself a story, I'm back in that, that thinking loop. But if I just feel, I'm using a different part of my brain. I'm moving out of that thinking part. Now, if I then feel my hand with my wrist, so I use my wrist and I, I can even move my wrist around a little bit or move my hand around a little bit so I can create a, a distinction between the two because the brain will tend to just summarize the event into one thing, but we wanna split them. And when we do that, if I'm using my right hand to hold my wrist and I'm feeling with my right hand, I'm using the left side of my brain, the left hemisphere. If I'm using my wrist to feel my right hand, my left wrist, I'm using the right hemisphere of my brain. And by shifting, consciously shifting back and forth, I create a, a heightened state of coherence in my brain, my mental state. So my mind goes into a different state, goes into a different state of awareness. It's one where there's a, there's a clarity that is beyond thought, beyond thinking. And thinking, I'm using a really very narrow definition here, you know, of thinking where it's actually using representational uh, symbolic computation where you're something means something else. So a word like if I say hand, you know, the word hand represents this. But if I actually feel the hand prior to thinking about it, it's not a hand, it's just now. And so this is a way to feeling we move into the present moment, predictably, effectively, and uh, easily accessible. So, and what happens whenever you do that on a regular basis is you start to rewire. You start to rewire your nervous system. You're able to then control your thoughts, control your brain, control your, your ability to direct your attention and then becomes much easier to perform um, anything actually. So this, when we do that, we move into that state. This is what it's referred to in the classics as E or YI. It's uh, the E is that state of mind that is, that it transcends the, the heart mind, the shin, and it is, it's there, it's a, a, there's a clarity there that allows you to direct your attention and also direct intention.